you're watching a segment of the Shiftcast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it here on the YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. Speed taking. Let's just jump right into it. We got uh, a, a, a take here from uh, Methelion? Methelion? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that works. Sure. Okay. Yeah. They say 1v1 skill is an overrated metric in evaluating how good an up-and-coming player will be at 3v3. Who are you yeah, throwing you this to? Do I want it? I'll take it. Michael? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I think we, we, uh, we stick so much. Hold on. We stick so much on I the know. success stories that we don't think about the failures. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There have been a ton of players who have, been, who have made noise in ones and never done anything in threes um well but the ones who hit really do hit and they all yeah. play a similar style um that's sort of i i, I kind of call it the typical build which is the counterattacking attacking hyper mechanical third man um something that i don't think sip gets enough credit for i don't think sip gets enough credit in general but um yeah i think i think there's a lot of players who never do anything with their one skill and it's because kind of what we talked about with wavy you have to be willing to learn. I think a lot yeah. of players get really good at ones and just assume that's going to be what makes them good. But you have to be committed to m learning threes and then applying the skill, the individual skill that you can accumulate really quickly through ones. I think about Daniel and how he's really struggled, it seemed like, on his first split on V1 with consistency because he came into Space Station and they built a system around him that allowed him to enable enabled him to play very much like a ones player, right? They had two player players kind of running point, getting demos, stealing boost, and the job was to get the ball with Daniel to Daniel in the air with boost because that is a one style of play. Once he went to G2, he really committed to learning how to play the threes, and look, he hasn't finished worse than second since then, right? So, while I think, you know, the Zens and the Daniels and the Rawasses are, are fantastic, I think there's a lot of players who don't make it through ones, so I would, I would tend to agree. Yeah, I think uh, that Diaz, Diaz yeah. was hyped up a little bit too much because of that. Because everyone yeah. saw him in the 1v1 just before he joined Complexity. And yeah, it's a, it's a tough transition sometimes. It's a, it's a layer of our obsession over mechanics, which obviously yeah, is important, but it's not the only thing that's important. Hootie. Yes, sir. Yan struggle in last season, 2020, 2022-2023, takes him out of the... Talk for GOAT expansion region player, so non-NAU player. I don't think so. I think it obviously devalued the stock, but, and, and, and so, like, if we're exclusively talking about SAM, then absolutely not. If we're talking about every region outside of NA and EU, then I would still say no. Um, I think he is in that discussion. I think there's only a few players in that discussion, uh, realistically. I mean, you've got TRK, Ahmad, O'Khaled, probably the yeah, Twins those, at this point, and yeah. definitely will be in that discussion moving forward. And then from Sam, I think maybe King Card. And Rays Bull. Rays Bull. Um, and then, so yeah. I think he's still in that discussion, yeah. but uh, it's, I mean, I definitely understand what they're saying. It certainly devalued the stock. I think he was charting towards being yeah, the agreed. Like, iconic yep. non-NAU player. And agreed. then after the World Championship, and then it kind of, like, the, the, the momentum slowed down quite Yeah, quickly. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Jens. Yeah. Uh, Dreamhack Montreal is the greatest or most, it was the best LAN in RL Esports history. Oof. Um, I mean, I was watching that too and enjoying the hell out of it. But I don't think you could say that a non RLCS LAN was the best LAN. I mean, if you would just give it to the most entertaining land, then I might even say Beyond the Summit is up there. Yeah. Um, in terms of storylines, Montreal was amazing, but it doesn't top the RLCS lands like Season 5, London. Uh, season 8. It's like Season 8, Madrid. I think even, I mean, it's tough to put season one there just because the, the scale wasn't there yet, but it's, a, it was, it's an incredible story. And then I think you can look at I personally think LA, London, LA was awesome. At London 2.0 and Boston are like the like S tier. Like that, the Boston thing with with BDS smoking vitality and then coming all the way back and just 
like the ascension of, of Zen and like, that's yeah. Yeah. Man, that was some good rocket league being played. Like for sure. I'm, I listen, I'm not saying it to say anything, but Carmen Corp blew that lead in game seven. In terms of inv- individual teams, the peeps run in Montreal was incredibly special. Mm-hmm. So there we have a different conversation, but in terms of the entire land, I mean, it was all about the peeps. Sure. But it's not above the RCS lands like season five, like season eight for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Michael, back to you. This is from Colt. Oxygen have a better chance of going three and zero in London than Falcons. I really, I forgot this was take this here, and I was really hoping I could give it to you. No, no. Falcons are the best. What? Team right now. I'm kidding. <laughs> Falcons are the best team right now. Yeah, I was um, that as well. I think Oxygen are a great call for like a sneaky three zero. Yeah, sure. They come out and just 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 hit people in the face a few times. I got hit in the face yesterday. You can see it a little cut here. So I, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm definitely um I'm definitely aware of what happens when you get hit in the face. You get disoriented and you don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, to me, Falcons they have the juice to like rebound when they're down two one in a series. They have the juice to rebound when they're down when they're up two one in a series. They can step on your neck like they're just. I think they're the best team in the world right now. I've said it. Um, so I, I'd still put them as a 3 0 favorite. All right. Let me bounce one over to Hootie and we'll finish off at the end. Hootie, entering the major, Team Secret should be considered the best team from South America. And who's that from? That is from, thank you for reminding me. That's we got to name drop that. That's a terrible take. <laughs> <laughs> Speak on it. Uh, that's, that's from Pyro. And look, no, no disrespect to Team Secret, but I, I, I mean, I know Furia stumbled a bit, and Team Secret has been consistent, but Furia is the only team that has the ceiling from South America to win an event, and I think that's true regarding the other teams at home, Ninjas, Crew, Complexity. I don't think any of those teams have the ceiling to truly win an event, and maybe, maybe Furia doesn't either, but they certainly are the only team that has a claim to that. And I think the only team that has shown that kind of level uh, in the past or, or in recent times here, like with their 3-0 run and the recent major uh, through Swiss stage, of course. So, no, I, I definitely would not consider Team Secret to be the best South America team um, at this major. All right, Jens, finishing it off with you. I agree, by the way. Uh, Rettles and Magic Bear. This is our government-mandated Luminosity Gaming speed take. Uh <laughs> Rettles and Magic Bear splitting up would be mutually beneficial to both players. Um, I would say that's that's more clear if they had actually flopped this season or this split even. They were still pretty good. Um, so I think they could do better still. So I'm going to say, yeah. I think Rettles and Magic Bear have stick together for quite a while. It's not a matter of not trying, right? We have some teams where you see players split up or duo split up before they've really shown all of their potential. At least it seems that way, right? And maybe that's due to personal issues, whatever it might be. For Rettles and Magic Bear, they really like playing with each other. It's very clear. And of course, that is helpful in the game as well, right? We've talked about mentality. If you have a good chemistry there, then it doesn't even so much matter that you're friends. It matters more that you have the composure on the field to always be you know, ready for each other's goals, ready for each other's passes. And they clearly have that. Um, but sometimes you know, you have to make a change if you want to actually improve. And I think Rattles and Magic Bear might actually both benefit from trying something new there. Yeah, just quickly, what you said is true. But at the same time, we now have two full seasons of tape, and their ceiling seems to be top 11, top 12 at a major. And I don't know if, as a competitor, you would want to stick with that and then think, hey, like we can do better. But at what point do you say, like, we've just hit the best we can be? Like, was last split the best we can be? Was Optic? spring split the best we can be and i think at that point it's not even like a matter of i think i can do better it's just hey we've hit our ceiling as a duo 
let's 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 figure it out uh, outside of it. And if we can't find anything better, let's just stay, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's always tough, of course, because as long as things aren't disastrous and you still enjoy playing with each other, then it makes sense for them to stick, yeah. right? Yeah. For, for, from their perspective. But looking at, looking from the outside is what we're doing. Yeah. It seems that they might actually benefit and, and, from getting some more freedom to choose some teammates. Yeah. And with this, with, um, with this extended offseason, I mean, everything's going to be shuffling, so... Yeah, I don't think any player should be held down to uh, their team. And honestly, I've thought about this for a while. If I'm sticking with my team, no contact for three months. Don't even hit me up to play other games. I need to come back into the season yeah, feeling like sure. I got a fresh new team. Yeah. Like no, like just no contact. I don't want to scrim. No I don't want to talk. You're blocked. Yeah, I would block my teammates. I'd be like, <laughs> I'll see you in November when we start scrimming serious <laughs> games. Like I'm playing, I'm playing other offseason tournaments with other players on pickup squads instead because I want to come back feeling like, oh, this is a new team. I'll tell like you if, what, if, I'm doing it, that's if any of these top level pros need an offseason teammate, I'll fill the void. <laughs> I'll slide in. <laughs> Who do you say that for you? I'm there. Top 128. I'm it. just saying. Yeah, listen, proven qualifier demon. Pl <laughs> honestly, proven RLCS riser because I bet you most people didn't hey, think that Judy could make it. All I'm saying is, I've been to one land. And I won the land undefeated. Listen, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any other player that's done that. People lie, oh Zen. People no, he lie. Hasn't. No, he hasn't. Oh, he lost flipping spin. That's right. <laughs> and he lost a recent major. Yeah, I just also oh, that, that one doesn't count. Then less than Hootie. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, people lie, but numbers don't. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> undefeated, you untied. Just like just like Bill Murray in Space Jam. He's retired, <laughs> undefeated, un untied. That was a segment of the Shift Cast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it here on the YouTube channel or on Spotify. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.